Hi, welcome back. Um, in this lesson, um, I'm actually going to show you how to add services to a command. And I'm, I'm going to assume that the command is something that you've uh, already uh, got up and running. Um, and that command actually lives within a plugin. So you've also created a plugin. Uh, but that, that command class that is executable from the command line uh, might still be empty. It might be just showing a hello world uh, uh, message. And then the next question is, of course, um, how to add real time uh, functionality into it. So the, the terminology that I'm introducing here is actually uh, that we're going to inject a dependency into a command class, uh, but that dependency is actually going to be a service. Um, that's Symfony terminology, but uh, Shopware is based upon Symfony, so therefore uh, we, we overtake or we, we uh, assume that same kind of uh, terminology. Um, and uh, to get actually into that, that service part is not really about just commands. Um, the theory that we're actually going to discuss and a little bit of practice uh, there as well is actually going to fit in into any kind of PHP class that we're going to develop. So the story about services, it's not just limited to commands. It's actually just there for any kind of class that you're going to write. So um, diving into it, um, the, earlier we created already a services.xml file. And as soon as we want to add a new dependency to that specific uh, service, uh, we'll need to extend upon the services.xml file. And then in that service, for instance, uh, the service of our command, uh, we already tagged this service earlier as a console.command. So that, that was actually the way uh, that the Symfony command line was able to detect our own class and add it to the command line um, uh, console. And uh, now on top of it, we're going to add an argument. Um, for the time being, we're only going to stick to services, um, uh, so the, an argument of the type service. And then specifically, this little example is going to be about uh, a service with ID is kernel. Um, so the first step is to uh, make sure that the XML is extended. Um, the second step is actually going to be within the PHP class, and we're actually going to inject the kernel that we've defined as an argument now into the PHP constructor. So you can see here that the constructor um, is actually overriding the parent constructor. So the, the, the string named uh, name is actually going to belong to the, the parent constructor from the Symfony command. Uh, we're going to pass on that name argument to the parent constructor. But in between, we're going to insert our own kernel. Um, and that kernel is going to be assigned to an internal variable, uh, a private kernel variable. And then actually, we can move to the next step, uh, which is within the execute method uh, that we're actually going to use this kernel variable. Um, for instance, I'm, I, I'm, I'm able to um, output a couple of lines like uh, what kind of environment I'm in, uh, the project directory, caching directory, logging directory. That there's a couple of uh, useful things uh, within the kernel uh, that we can play around with. Um, little note, uh, the kernel actually also gives access to the DI container, but instead of actually using the DI container right away in our code, it would be better actually to deal with um, services within the services.xml file. So that there's a couple of things in this kernel um, that are maybe a little bit uh, less usable or it should be less usable um, in our own code. But I hope you get the, the basic principle. So by inserting an argument uh, called kernel, from within the XML file, um, and then actually inserting that same kind of argument as a dependency within the PHP constructor, uh, it leads to a, a usage of the code uh, like you see uh, right here. So let, let's deal with another example. Um, another example might be a product repository. So uh, again, I'm, I'm opening up the services.xml file, and within the product uh, services.xml, I'm inserting a service, and this time with ID product repository. And once the XML is there, I'm jumping to the PHP class. I'm inserting the product repository um, as a dependency. H however, a little note, I'm not injecting the product repository, which is actually a class that is not there. Uh, but actually, the, the product repository class is uh, automatically generated, kind of, uh, based upon an entity repository interface. So I'm, I'm declaring also that the product repository is matching, actually, with the entity repository interface assigning it into an internal variable, and then we can play around with it, um, as you can see right here. Now, I've chosen actually the, the search method of the product repository, which is leading actually into a couple of other things. So for instance, I need to create uh, criteria, uh, even though the criteria might be uh, blank. 
Uh, I also need to create a context, um, but a default context in the command line is, uh, is good enough. And then actually the output of that search command is going to be a search result with entities, and every entity is actually a product. Um, and as you can see, the output of this command is simply going to uh, show a listing of all of the product numbers uh, per product. Um, so that's basically it. Um, and let's dive into a little bit of a practical example to see how this works in, uh, in PHP Storm. So we're back here with uh, PHP Storm. And earlier we created already an example plugin that contained a command line. The command class was still kind of empty. It only ex uh, executed a simple hello world. I've, I've removed the hello world uh, already. Uh, so it's nothing more than the definition of a command um, in there uh, as a blank template. Um, and actually the command itself was declared also using a service definition um, uh, tagged with console.command. So Symfony, the command line of Symfony is actually going to pick up on it. Now I'm, I'm going to add a dependency to it, uh, the kernel dependency. Um, so to do that, I'm, all, uh, I'm going to extend upon the XML uh, defining a new service uh, with as ID the kernel. That's the first step. And before I'm actually going to refresh the caching, which is needed after I've modified uh, these services uh, as well, I'm actually going to extend upon the PHP class um, already as well. So I'm going to override the PHP constructor. And then within the constructor arguments, I'm simply going to type in that I want to extend upon the kernel. Well, there's multiple kernels out there, but currently I'm in a, a production template. So the kernel of the production template would be uh, the best match. And I'm actually going to insert it, initialize it um, as an internal property like so. And then I'm actually good to go. I'm, I'm able to call upon the kernel and, for instance, uh, output the current project directory. And of course, this is something nice to, to actually uh, pull to the command line as well, um, uh, like, uh, like so. So let's actually um, see if this uh, is working uh, already. Um, uh, by executing actually the bin console example command, um, it might go wrong at this moment, but let's wait for a moment. Uh, no, actually, the, the XML has been refreshed already, and, and simply by executing the example command, I'm now seeing actually that the current project directory that I'm in is actually, um, well, this little path. Now let's uh, create another example um, also with uh, the product uh, repository. So it's another service, and actually the name of this service is going to be product repository. So there's a little bit of auto-completion in here to uh, help you along with, uh, with things. Um, then I'm going to move over to the, um, the PHP class, and I'm actually going to use that product repository as a second argument um, to my class. However, there's no such a class in, um, um, in, uh, in uh, Symfony or in Shopware um, called product repository. Actually, what I need to do is I need to define this entity as um, a product, sorry, an entity uh, repository interface. Uh, so that's going to be this one. Um, also, again, I'm going to initialize this uh, argument as an internal property. So there we go. And then I'm actually able to call upon this repository um, and extend it uh, as we can see right here. So um, to do actually a search, we do uh, need a couple of arguments. So first of all, there's the criteria. And second, there's a context. Well, for the context, it's always best actually within the command line to simply call upon the uh, framework class called context to create yourself um, a new default context. Um, there's a little warning here about uh, the, war the, the, the method itself being marked as internal, uh, but let's skip that uh, for now. Um, and then actually the, the, the first argument that I would need, it, uh, would need for this uh, search to, to do something useful is actually a new class instance of criteria. And I'm not going to do any fancy searching yet. I'm simply going to instantiate that criteria and instantiate that context so that there's a certain um, search results as an output. Um, as you can see here, the return value is actually an entity search result. Um, from that search result, I'm actually able to um, obtain entities. And then I'm actually able uh, to loop through those entities and call upon um, for instance, just let me output something, uh, call upon, for instance, the product uh, ID. Now, at this moment, the ID method is kind of, um, 
well recognized, but, but not really. So what I always love to do is actually declare within such a loop um, a specific product variable as being an instance of the product entity. And then actually you can see that get ID suddenly matches uh, with the actual um, entity class. Um, and let's rerun the command as well to see if this is working. Um, we're waiting for the cache to be reloaded uh, again, but then you can see an output of all of the IDs. So I hope we, you get the point by simply inserting something um, as an argument in XML um, and then actually using those arguments in PHP as well. We can start playing with the code uh, step by step and get further into um, the, the shopware architecture. So uh, to summarize things, uh, step one is define your argument in services.xml. Step two is injecting that same dependency as a PHP class into your own uh, uh, PHP constructor. And then actually the third step is start using that dependency as an internal uh, variable. Um, of course, there's much more to tell about this. For instance, what kind of arguments can you actually use in your services.xml file? Uh, what kind of dependencies can you use and how to define your own dependencies? Um, but that's it for now. Uh, at least we've shown uh, two little examples of how to deal with dependencies within your own command class.